Before they see us big forces new Dixie nitroglycerin, they only break down the door. After they see her. <laughs> Crowds just like they used to happen. This was an opera house, huh, boys? Grand opera brought crowds like this into this lobby. Trials. That's what the public wants. <laughs> Dolphin Columbus on yet? Just a minute, Brannigan. How about that five spot you owe me being on? The uh, five spot? Yeah. Oh, you mean the fin. The fin. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll get you didn't forget anything, did you? Oh, I may forget my lyrics. Oh, you better not. We're not at the Columbus Gator, you know. Dixie, your mom. Your mom. Gee, gee. Oh, be a good girl, huh? I'll be rooting for you. <laughs> Help you, honey. I'm warning you, comic. Yeah, so the copper that gave me this. No romance in those copper souls, Dixie. Just because a guy goes through two red lights to get Quiet, it. Irish. Get upstairs and put your false face on. Dixie. When I just wanted to wish you luck. That's okay, comic, but keep it at a distance. Beautiful, Junior, but it's not for me. Come on and give me heat, cause I don't like my music sweet. I wanna feel my impulse beat. Take it off the E string, play it on the G string. If this gives you a thrill, it's happening much against my will. And only cause I've caught a chill. Take it off the E string, play it on the G string. What goes a lot goes when I do my act. Boys, it's a fact. Whenever I'm applauded, you're rewarded. Each time the drummer jumps, I get goose flesh, pig and lumps. I start breaking out in bumps. Brother, I'm making my eggs and bacon, earning my pay. Just by shaking this way, four shows a day. Was when crime was if you stole some dough. Now that ain't so. 
But if you lack attire, it's the black Mariah. Mm -mm. Lady Godiva. I know what you're waiting for. I've been waiting a week. And I've a mind to do some more. I'll stick around. But I don't want to break the law. But listen, brother, I've got a mother, old and gray. But she's a Lulu. I support her this way for shows a day. After the show tonight. The only date I make with comics is with a Sunday funny. It'll be all right with me. Sunday morning breakfast. Yeah, I'm sure it would be. Hey, you forgot to take your hand out of that one. Gee, you work fast. Nothing to it, Mandy. Butterflies are usually hard to catch. Uh, not when you've had practice. Boy, you sure have practice. Pretty sure there won't be no more room. If I heard they can all move over. Mandy, here's some glitter to start your collection. Gee, thanks, Biff. You better tell them what that glitter is. Oh, <laughs> as though I don't know. Of course I know. They wear it around the uh, waist uh -huh. and they have to... Mm -hmm. Well, they use it. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, you make me so mad. We want to leave the wife, Dixie. Don't do that, Hank. Just send her around for a couple of less time. That worm's lucky he did run away. Wait till I slap his face in the pickle persuader. They'll find his jaw on Staten Island. <laughs> yeah? What? What did I tell you? With diamonds in your hair, an SB Force personally grooming you for stardom. No, thanks to your first comic. Oh, Forsy, are they all alike? Don't you ever make a new one? Not with comics. Only with girls. And only S.B. Force can do anything new with them. And I guess it's up to me. And I'm just the gal to enjoy the job. <laughs> you really gave him the money for it. Next go ahead, Oh, the next show, the Yale Bowl. Oh, I could go home dreaming. Gee, if I could please the customers like that, I'd be the happiest girl in the world. <laughs> That's what keeps me young and beautiful, Alice. So we get any congrats from the Golden Boys goddess? Oh, it had its novelty appeal. Meow. Yeah. Well, there are plenty of novelties around the old Oh, bravo. But that doesn't sound like one of them. If that's who I think it is, send your applause for the acts I need it. Yours. Now, is that the way to talk when I'm handing you posies? Your applause is no music to my ears, Brannigan. Where's that prop you swiped? I meant to tell you, Dixie, when you dress for our date tonight, blue is my favorite color. And no big hat, see, that'll get in my way. When I dress for a date with you, it'll be a suit of armor and brass knuckles. Gee, that's just a come on. She wants to make it look difficult. She'll change her tune. Honey sugar. See? Yes, darling. Russell sugar. Ooh. What is it, Angel? Oh, I've just started the play. Yeah, the double play. Wait till Dolly catches up with you. How does it sound? Ah, I class. That's for us. Shall we read it together later? Anytime you say. Why don't you get up, goddess? It'll take one of the plates to get you and Russell out of burlesque. It'll take a dare. That settles it. We've got to have a new one. New what? All the museum pieces. I haven't seen one like that since the wilkes Bear Regal. In some ways, I think it would have been better to stay on the farm. Mr. Foss always said that nothing's too good for S.B. Foss players, but that thing is certainly too something for me. Me too. Hey, look, to keep you Cupid dolls from pining so much, us fellas up here are going to chip in a buck apiece on some new plumbing for you. How's that? Our hero. I put the switch on Moe if he's backstage. He said he knew where we could get one. It's nothing, girls. I was just doing it for that lovely young butt of the old opera, Miss Dixie Daisy. Well, I'm touched. Mandy, Joey, 
Bill. Biff. Maybe Biff will pay double with his new interest. You figure that way, don't forget your saloon keeper friend Louie, even if he doesn't work here. Sure, anybody that saved as much out of the rackets as Louie is a poor part of this giant upkeep. Or does he? And while you're at it, put Russell down for plenty. He cares so much the guys upstairs will forget what he looks like. Well, someone else had better forget what he looks like, too. Some dames never know when a guy's fed up. Oh, uh, Dolly, uh, we were just kidding about how much Jack we could get out of upstairs for the new bric-a-brac. Yeah, I came in on the tail end of it. I'll take care of Russ since I sort of got the habit. Good thing you have, girlie. You sure couldn't hold a man unless you did pay up. didn't mind it, but burlesque artists. <laughs> Times have changed. They ain't got no manners. Think they're better than an honest man that works for a living and don't pose around on no stage. Excuse me! Hey, what'd you do to the statue of the hermit? Boy, were you getting dished by the gruesome twosome? You know alcohol like they use in hospitals. Yeah, well, I know a better place to use it. Give me it. And the next time you girls pull a free-for-all, don't pull it during my act. You know, it's tough enough doing something artistic for those lugs out there without you and Dolly calling each other by your right name. Well, you do, honey. Drop your spangles. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was embarrassing, believe me. But very successful. Huh? What hit me? How do you left, Miss Dixie? We're on. Coming. Well, girls, keep the home fires under control. Shall we join the customers? That's what we're getting paid for. You're gonna feel pretty silly someday when you remember acting like this. If I remember you that long. Oh, you'll remember. We're gonna make sensational partners. Sure about that? Oh, I mean in some of our dance routines. Naturally. Never any doubt what a comic means. You better settle down to it, Dixie. Looks like you and I are in for a good long run here. Yeah? I've been training for it. I can keep ahead of you. Hurry up, Invisible. You're on. Time, there's no use asking you. This time I'll be good, please. I said no, I mean no. Hey, where are you going? I'm going to meet a blonde. A blonde? That blonde that works the dice at Kelly's pool room. Uh, maybe you know it. No, I don't know. Hey, I want a blonde. You want a blonde? What kind of a blonde? Any kind. One like this, or one like this, or one like this. Just a blonde. Hey, how come you have all the luck with the girls? Because, my boy, I have something you haven't got. Oh, you got a magic thing there? A secret little article? That? All I have to do is wave that little persuader under the lady's nose. She gives me anything I want. Anything? Anything at all. Hey, sell it to me. Well, my boy, that's a very valuable article. My price would be $1,000. Uh, so long. Hey, lady, you let your motor running. Don't get excited. You didn't start. I bet I could stop it. 
Hey, maybe I ought to buy that thing, eh? I thought you said you wanted a blonde. Ah, she looks like she's a blonde at heart. Here, here, you can't talk that way about that sweet, charming, innocent young lady. I was just trying to tell her that... that Never that, mind what you were trying. Now, are you interested in purchasing this persuader or not? Well, it seems like an awful lot of money for such a small article. My boy, don't you realize the best things always come in small packages? Yeah, but before I spend all that money, how do I know it's going to work? Why, of course it'll work. All you have to do Damn is put a little persuader under the lady's nose. She gives you anything you want. Oh, hello. <clears throat> Oh, there's never anybody around there with your water. What is it? It looks like a raid. I'm trying to get forced. A raid? Hello, hello. That red light's supposed to flash when the cops are in the lobby. Well, why isn't it working? That's well, but uh, couldn't you make it a little cheaper? Well, I might sell it in the neighborhood of $500. Uh, that's an expensive neighborhood. Well, uh, how much money have you got? Oh, roughly $400. What do you mean, roughly? Well, when you smooth it out, it's three bucks. Well, yes. enough of this nonsense now. Because I like you, and because huh? you have an honest face... Murder. I'm going to sell you this little article for $100. $100. What? Remember, my boy, just uh, pass it under her nose. Just pass it under her nose. Anything I ask for, anything. Now you've done it. They heard that hand you got way down at the police station. Something smells fishy around here. Why wasn't that light on? Because somebody didn't want it on. Look. Cut as clean as the whistle right here under my nose. And by somebody who... Give me your money. When the lights blank out, make a break for the coal chute. Know where it is? I don't hang around the same parts of this theater that you do. Give me a kiss. In the cellar next to the vacant room and cut the end of the blackout. Not a chance, Brannigan. I've been saving up for this all evening. Hey, wait a minute. force out of my own pocket of hired limousines to take you to jail. Three cheers for force, our boss. Yes, he came just in the nick of time. <laughs> Call in. Well, you didn't have to, didn't have to watch. Nothing, never mind. to warrant such a, such a ignoble act like that raid. Right. But it wasn't the cops that kept the light from flashing. It was someone right from our middle. And it wasn't the cops that tried to strangle me. That female flatfoot was wearing gloves. Oh! Dixie, what are you talking about? When the lights went out, I made for the coal chute. I was starting down the stairs when somebody grabbed me. Mandy, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Well, it wasn't me, Dixie. Honest, it wasn't. Somebody grabbed me and tried to strangle me. Those hands were long and thin, and they knew what they were doing. Was strong enough to make me black out. Sugar, you're still blacked out. 
Dixie. Somebody was trying to find his way out. Yeah, and Nick, it's a funny thing to mistake for a signpost. Well, I've seen a lot of pink elephants in my day, honey, but never a strangler. Besides, who'd want to kill you? Well, I don't say they wanted to kill me. What I'm saying is that somebody in that theater tried to kill somebody else. Maybe somebody does want to get rid of somebody else around here. Just what do you mean by that? I mean that three people get crowded at a table for two. And when some people get crowded, they push. Please, please. Whatever we got in the old opera house, we ain't got murderers. <laughs> and this is my answer to such foolishness. Ah, wallpaper. You should have such wallpaper to pretty up your house. To each and every one of my actors, I give free and without cost. One paid in full share of my personal stock in the old opera house. Hooray! Thank you. Come on up, everybody, and get it. Great. That's right. Come on, everybody. 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 Come on
your name up there. What's your real name, honey? <laughs> Deborah Hoople. Deborah Hoople? You think... You... Yeah, maybe just Dixie. Dixie Daisy in Broadway's latest hit. You know what I'm going to do opening night? Uh -uh. Buy the whole first row just for me. Sounds nice, Brannigan. You'll see. Won't take long either. Come on, let's get out of here. Yep. Hey. Uh-uh. That's why I ordered beer. I said it was to your interest. Comics. <laughs> Thank you. 4.50, sir. For when I'm not around to protect my best interest. Well, here's your change, mister. Keep it. that he used her for a siren. We artists all have to put up with jealousy. You look in this window once more and you'll get a bottle over there. Those Chuck Suey hustlers don't stop Why don't you dress someplace else? It's my dressing room. And it's their porch. They're probably a darn sight hotter than that. Why are they hot tonight? A couple of fellas fell right out of their boxes. What's that work of art? Laurel leaves for the party tonight. We're going to have a regular unveiling. Like when you unveil statues of generals and horses and things. Maybe that'll teach you to mind your own business. <laughs> Not that it matters to you, Dane, but someone had to teach him that a lady's entitled to privacy. You'll get plenty of privacy if that waiter's hurt. They have laws for people like you. Oh, yeah? Who gave you a cue? Stick to your own business and I'll stick to mine. Stick to my own business? That's a laugh. I've stood for your knives in the back to keep a little peace around here, but I'm through. If you're not jumping on us, you're knocking out waiters who wouldn't look at you if you were rolled in batter and french fries. And I'm through letting the corn belt upstart get pushed ahead of me. Where does everybody get the idea you're so hot? Uh, Maybe the customers get the idea. You can have these customers. I'm getting out of this brine house. I get Oh, I wish he wouldn't say that. It sounds so cheap. Molly, let me help you. Oh, oh, I Hey, is that good, that uh, bow business? <laughs> it ain't hot, is it? What do you mean, hot? It's like this. I think of this pal of mine I used to work with in the old days. When we got legitimate, he took up plumbing. And what do you know? He gives me it wholesale. No! And what's more, I saved you plenty by installing the toy store. Oh, that's oh, that's just great. look at that. Just look at that. Oh! Ain't that gorgeous? Why, it's got class oh, enough for the Queen of Sheba. Now, you'd really have something if you had a whole suit to match. Sweet. Come on, come on, everybody down for the conga. You, play with that thing later. Come on, everybody. Okay, come on, okay. hurry up. What's the matter with Say? He sounds like he swallowed a file. Probably slow because he didn't ask him for the party. Probably won't even have a party with Mother's Darling throwing bottle grenades at the food supply. I'll try and smooth things over while you girls hand out the allure. Hey, Dick. Look, it was a break for us to come on here, so okay. But Columbus was never like this. Louise raised a slit your throat, dollies up in the air. Since when couldn't I take care of myself? Yeah, I know, but... We almost got him that time. Find the stage gang that didn't eavesdrop. Go on, get down there. Now, was that a sight? I asked you. Hold it. could get moonlight on that stage, force would be a millionaire tomorrow. Where you off to, Miss Venus? I'm on a peace mission. If you hear any screams, tell Force to hire a new woman. Uh-uh. 
You won't lose any arguments. Not looking like that. You won't have time. You know, if this were real lasso, I'd drag you up here like a calf in a western. Only no calf ever had a hide as pretty as that. What would you do when you got me? You've had a little trouble putting the brand on so far. Ah, that's so far. After a sight like that, my Irish ancestors would rise up in their graves if Brannigan missed the bus. I hate to disturb your ancestors. Well, what sense, friend? I shall use too much sense. And if you want to start something... Hey, Pierre! The girl's hand supper's nearly finished. You better get ready. Oh, now, wait a minute, boys. I'm carrying a white flag. You Chinese fight too darn well for us to want to mix with you. Come here, let me take a look at that. That isn't the way to take care of it. You go back. We have nothing to do with you. Yeah, we'll have something to do with this. Here. Uh, no dinners? No more dinners, ever. No. Oh, now, look. We have to put up with enough of that dame without her starving us out in the bargain. She was born with an axe in her mouth. She ought to be put out of her misery like a mad dog. Come on. Tell me you'll bring us our dinners and I'll smooth the divorce into giving you some passes. Things getting a little bit difficult for you, Piff? Yeah, Mandy. You know how it is. Sometimes these things take time. They sure do. You gotta plan it out. Sometimes you finagle them this way, and other times you finagle them that way. That's why I like sweet dumb girls like Alice. No finagling. We bring the dinners. Right, Blue Spirit. And don't spare the ice until that's better. See you later. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Ginseng root. You eat it, makes you live a long time. Thanks. Thanks a lot. So he slips you one of those never die things, huh? Yes, Mr. Brannigan. It's a charm to ward off the evil spirit. Biff, what's the matter? That was my ancestors rising up in their graves. How about that guy in the front row? How'd you make out with the waiters, Dixie? Yeah, did we put on the feed bag? Yeah. And what's that? I don't know. A waiter gave it to me. Hey! Dixie's got a new boyfriend. Oh. Oh. You eat it and live long time. Sealing wax. Oh, oh. oh I'm sorry, girls. Well, everything's hunky dory now. Oh, uh, Jake has a few surprises he wants to put in for the unfailing. So you better clear out early for the finale. This place has as much privacy as a hot dog stand. Look, it's shaped like a man. Ugh, it's disgusting. Not so much like a man, more like a skeleton hanging from the gallows. Want to trade it in, Dixie? Ah, oh, you can have the fool thing. The same charming gathering. Hello. Well, look what the pixies brought in out of the rain. The same old, familiar faces. And some new arrivals. Who are you? I'm Dixie Daisy. This is Gigi Graham. Who are you? I am the Princess Nervina, star of this theater. I have been in the hospital for the last two weeks. Dislocated vertebrae. Maybe she took a little trip to Toledo, for old time's sake. I have never worked in, how you say, to Toledo. Don't give me that accent business. You know how to say it when I first knew you. Toledo. I don't go to Toledo. Only tramps work in Toledo. Well, they get around. No. I should have danced before royalty. Instead, the princess throws pearls. To swine. Are you snooty? We're on again, beautiful. Hello, Black Iron. It wasn't bad luck. I'd let her have it. Who was that overexposed debutante? A dame who thinks she's four times sharper than she is. There's one thing I hate. It's a phony. I should have danced before royalty. Instead, the princess throws pearls to swine. I had a black cat like that once, and there wasn't so much of it. Well, I wouldn't be too hard on her. She's bad luck to some people, not so bad to others. If anyone else drops in, then I should meet. Tell them I'm on stage. The court is now in order. Make one a little discipline.
leave us have order and leave us have quiet. Bring the prisoner before the I startled you? Lately, sister, I've been startled by experts. Uh, tell me, while I have been gone, has this uh, Yulita, has she said anything about me? No, no. You were a smash surprise, Billy. It is only that some people talk too much. And this Lulita talks a lot too much. Not to me. Ask the others in the dressing room. I dress alone, downstairs. I'd rather live in a big sty than with those women. What are you doing, Jake? Moving up the whole prop room? I got to do my surprises upright, Dixie. Still clumsy, eh? Yes, I am back. Just visiting, I hope. Stay in, Mr. Prop Man. What finds you guilty of being drunk and finds you five dollars? Here's a ten dollar bill. Ten dollar bill? I haven't got any change. Go out and get drunk again. Court <laughs> is now ready to proceed the trial of the horse case of Miss Peaches Wilson. Miss Peaches Wilson! Oh. Miss Come on, what are you waiting for? You're on. Oh, I'm sorry, Sam. Ah, hello, Excellency. For me. What is that? God. She does what you do, only they like it better. You two can trade notes at that wing ding they're throwing tonight. Do you think I would go? I, the princess? Free drinks, Highness. I might come. Now I want to see Mr. Foss. Is he here? Right in the same old rat's nest. Want me to tell him you're back? Tell him to come to my dressing room. Yeah. Why don't I get a cigar? I'll be back right away. Now come, come, Miss Peaches. We want the truth. The what? The truth. Oh, that old thing. Were you over up before me? I don't know. What time do you get up? Now, Miss Peaches, the facts of the case are clear to me. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Don't you think that's a rather personal question? Oh, you'll have to tell them. Why? 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 Because according to the Constitution of the Bylaw State of Coma, Section 63, Upper 7, Car 84, leaving for South Mississippi at all points where it's distinctly said you you know, hee hee, oh, 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 oh. I hold you in contempt. I don't like you either. I don't like you either. Well, I don't like you either, 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 either. Enough of that. Who's the carpenter with a hammer? How dare you refer to me as a carpenter? I am just... Yeah, well, I'm just a two. Just as good as you. What for? I'm not thirsty. Hey, Louie, you know something? Them girls is lucky they know a couple like us. I bring in defensive gadget, you roll the kegs. We're running this party. Yeah. Where are you going? Back in to get the rest of the beer. That's all you're going to get. I told Charlie to take it easy on the free drinks from my pals. Sure, Louie. <laughs> sure. Step aside, it's all dark and with it. Some gentlemen are passing. All my sacrifices, Alfred, are but keys to open the gates of heaven and let me be with you. Oh, I'll bat him in the aisles with that one. I feel it. Here. Here in the complaint that you hit your husband over the head with a frying pan. Black Polk's eyes... Are coming, Sammy. Some people don't learn easy, Songbird. Now, don't do it, Louie. Gotta take a lot of lessons before they stay in line. Now, don't do it, Louie. Ow! Quiet! Just kidding. You're terrific, Louie. No, it's the rough and tough and big shot, Louie the Grin. When he's bad, women are pushing guys around. Come on and give me heat Cause I don't like my music sweet And I want to feel my impulse beat Take it off the E-string, play it on the G-string It that gives you a thrill It's happening much against my will And only cause I caught a chill Take it off the E-string, play it on the G-string What's on the line, so when I do my act Whenever I'm a boy, or rewarded, each time I'm a young, you're the biggest lump. I start breaking out. Brother, I'm making my eggs and bacon, earning my pay. Just by shaking it.
you comics as far as he can throw the prop room. What's up now? Oh, that sealing wax from the box the waiter gave me. He's got it on the catch of the door. Sometimes I think you don't have the right respect for your fellow workers. Maybe I ought to try Louis masterful touch on you. Good thing the goddess didn't hear that. Hey, Sammy! Hey, Sammy, the prima donna isn't up here. Oh, what the deuce. She can't miss this number. It's the finale. Look, stall. You have to stand on your heads out there to keep looking stall. That dame causes more trouble around here than a forest fire. What do you mean she isn't here? Have you looked? Yeah. Look out, Jake Steele's there. Oh, I know. If I wouldn't... <laughs> Look. Around her neck. It's her G-string. It ain't there for an ornament, either. Force. I gotta get force. Best get the police quick. Press and roll evenly from side to side with a firm touch. Without making a detailed examination, I'd say they were the same. Now, the first finger of the right hand... It's the finger I pressed against the wax. I was... Hey, you're holding up the parade. What a parade. The only thing missing is the elephant. Is that another limb of the law? Don't worry about him. Save your explanations for his nibs. He enjoys hearing them. Miss Daisy, isn't it? Yes. I'm Inspector Harrigan. Sit there, please. Now, to repeat what I was saying, since Miss Daisy was uh, busy downstairs, 
Someone who was in the room immediately after the body was discovered took that G-string for reasons of his or her own. What G-string? The murder weapon, Miss Daisy. Well, it was her own G-string and it was around her neck. We all saw it. All but the police. The G-string had disappeared by the time we arrived at the theater. Well, maybe it just fell off. How could anybody take the G-string in that crowd? Everybody in the theater ran in. We are not interested in how it was done. We are interested in who did it, where the weapon was put, and why it was taken. Well, why don't you search us and settle that part of it? Muscles here looks like he might enjoy us. You can search me, Mr. Kelly. <laughs> not that I could hide anything on me. <laughs> and the lady's point is well taken. And a search after this time in this crowd would only cause confusion. It's getting a little too warm here for me. Well, there's been plenty of time for concealment. But if one of you could suggest why it was taken. Well, she always carried money on her. She used to hide it in the lining of her costume. You think there's a ghoul in this room? Since there's a murder. Oh, yes, uh, Mr. Mr. James Wong. Yes, I've heard of you, Mr. Wong. Hmm, that's a nasty bump. Nasty throw. Nasty enough to cause nastiness all around, eh? Mm, I see. Send out a call for Louis Grindero. Complete description of him and his car. Louis did it? Well, that settled it. Now we can go home. What did I tell you? I'm afraid uh, that doesn't quite settle the matter. But he ran away. Please be seated. Grindero took his car, as much cash as he had in the saloon next door, after receiving a call from, uh... Okay, so I called him. When we was in the racket, she did me a couple of turns. All I did was tell him she was dead. I don't care how Louie knew about anything. I know Lolita was so scared of what he was going to do that she was taking it out on us. I know he started something and... He's got his for... reasons. He's scared of cops. The pen tossed something loose in him, and ever since... He knew what they would do if they got him in again. Well, he may or may not be guilty of this murder. He'll be examined as thoroughly as any of you when he is picked up. But, Lolita Laverne was murdered between the time she came upstairs after her quarrel with Grindero and the finding of her body. Before I went up at the end of our act. Perhaps. During most of that time, the room was cleared. But the murderer had time to strangle Laverne, break Jake's seal, and replace it with one of his own. I know she wasn't in there when I put the seal on. She had been out have said something. Let us hope so. Well, do all of you still remember exactly nothing about your own movements or anyone else's? Oh, yes. Yes? Uh, uh, yes, Miss Angel? Well, once I went to the water cooler and I was all alone. Yes? Well, don't you see? See what? There was nobody with me. Anybody could have gone up. Even you, Miss Angel. Oh! Oh, excuse me. Well, it all adds up to this. The stagehands could wander about the theater at will. Candy Butcher? The stage manager who was angry? What are you getting at? Sure, I was sore, but I didn't know she was... Even the flyman, who makes no secret of his dislike of burlesque performers. You don't like burlesque performers either, Statue. Oh, they're not the easiest in the world to get along with. <laughs> they, they don't like my pipe. Uh, Mr. Rogers. Yeah? Where were you? I was first on for the finale. Before that, I was dressing. Mr. Brannigan, could you put that away? Oh, I can't do my thinking without this. Seems I can't do mine with it. Okay, I'll turn my back. Where were you? Me? Oh, I was just up and down. Up and down the stairs, indeed. I didn't say that. Did you mean it? I didn't say I didn't. I was just up and down. Where were you up and down? What interest did you have in Lolita Laverne? What is an interest in Laverne? Goodness. When you were up and down the stairs. I wasn't up and down the stairs. I was up and down on the floor. It's a gag. I'm not interested in gags. I'm interested in what you were up and down on. The stage. Oh, you make me so mad. Look, I'll explain it to you. First I stand up, and then she kisses me. And then I'm down, see? It starts like this. Ooh, I'm an incubator baby. You're an incubator baby? Uh -huh. What do you do on Mother's Day? I sell flowers to an oil stove. What's the matter with these two? They're comics. <laughs> Stop this nonsense. What are you trying to tell me? The stage, the skit. Up and down. Look, I'll show you. Stop! 
this. Nonsense has held up the whole investigation. You've driven more important things out of my mind. You see, where was I? I... Oh, yes, uh, Miss Norvina. I am the Princess Norvina. And I was in my dressing room until I hear the excitement. Is that so? Well, why don't you ask her about Toledo? Laverne was always making cracks about Toledo. Making cracks, period. I told her I had never worked in Toledo. That is the truth. Is it not the truth, Mr. Foss? Isn't it? She never worked in my Toledo theater with Levine. As for cracks lover make, it is as this person says. Cracks, period. The cracks she make to her were enough to start a fight. Yeah? Well, I was mad enough to take a poke at her. And I'm mad now. Hey, you, uh... <coughs> You took a poke with a nail file, our report shows. Well, I grabbed at anything I could lay my hands on. That sounds natural. But a nail file, that could be used to, uh, well, to kill a person, couldn't it? Sure. And if the weapon was murderous, the attack might be considered murderous, mightn't it? Wait a minute. You're running words around me like a brush fire. Not words, Miss Baxter. Facts. I'm not responsible for the facts. Mr. Rogers was responsible for the quarrel because of his interest in Miss Levan. We hoped to produce a play I obtained on the legitimate stage. Our interest was purely professional. Miss Levan threw a bottle at Mr. Wong earlier in the evening. You resented that. I was mad. I was plenty mad. Bringing on a quarrel between Miss Levan and Miss Daisy. Which had been coming on for a long time. Put that in, too. She said Laverne should be put out of her misery like a mad dog. Is that true, Miss Daisy? Yeah, well, it, it was a figure of speech. An unfortunate one, seeing it was acted on so suddenly. Now I have something to say. Yes? We are all in the room after the body is found. I am next to her. Suddenly, she notices something on her finger. She turns away to wipe it off. It is red. Like the wax on the door, perhaps. I thought we'd get to that. Since you started this reunion, you've made one charge after another. You knew what was my print on that wax when I walked into this room, which you've been setting a little bombshell for the last spot in the bill. If I really had changed the wax, do you think I'm dumb enough to leave my print in the middle of it? Murderers are caught by mistakes, Miss Daisy. I was in the dressing room, I saw the wax, I was curious, and I touched it. Why did you later furtively wipe it off? I wiped it off, but not furtively. You turned away from me. I turn away from garbage dumps, too. One more thing. The wax that was used to reseal the door has been identified as coming from the box given to you by Mr. Wong. I gave it to Lolita. You knew about it? Everybody who was in the room knew about it. I thought you were regular. I didn't think you'd try to pull the blame on us. I wasn't trying to. Laverne hated each other's insides. Her remarks have shown that. There are plenty of people I don't like. You, for one. But I don't go around killing them. I didn't say you did. I merely said that you hated the Laverne girl. That you were the only person admittedly in the dressing room during the time the murder occurred. That the wax used to reseal the door came from a box given to you. That your fingerprint was on the wax. And that you tried to take that wax from your finger without being noticed. Stop it! Why, you two-faced snooper! Wait a minute, Inspector. There, there is some mistake. Inspector, I... there is a big mistake. Mr. Brannigan? You can't think this girl did that murder. Why, look at her. Sitting there, so beautiful and defenseless. Why, only last week she came to this theater and made more friends than a whole litter of kittens. Why, she couldn't any more... Miss Daisy is very beautiful, but she doesn't strike me as being either fragile or ethereal. Yeah. Well, furthermore, that woman wasn't out of my sight all evening. That's a silly lie. She just said she was alone in the dressing room. Well, while we're talking about lies, why don't you give yourself top building? You forgot to mention that you told us guys this afternoon that you'd kill the leader if she kept running around with that Louis. Well, perhaps I felt like killing her. But I loved her. I wanted to marry her. I loved her too much to kill her. Is there something you wanted to tell me, Miss Baxter? No. Didn't you want to tell me it's impossible for Russell Rogers to marry Lolita Laverne? No, no, no. Impossible because he's already married? Married to you? <laughs> You're surprised that I know this. Two years ago, when you were booked during a raid, I interest you to know your record was collected. We didn't want to make it known because we knew that Foss didn't hire married couples. When I saw her making a play for him, I wanted to tell, but he wouldn't let me. He told me he loved her and didn't ever love me. Yeah, and what did you tell me? She wasn't crying the night she threatened to kill Laverne and me. 
Look at this. Those marks. She did that a week ago. Tonight I threatened to leave her. That isn't true. It's all mine. How long did you have to practice to make like such a heel? Uh, please. This is the coroner's preliminary report. Lolita Laverne was poisoned. She would have died in three minutes if the strangler had not interfered. In other words, the murderer was so impatient he couldn't wait for his poison to take effect. Or, there are two murderers in the old opera house. This is my first experience with burlesque. It's a surprising profession. You will all remain within reaching distance until the case is settled. Poisoned. If we can just get out of here, I don't care what happens. Please. Please. I thought there was to be a party tonight. Are we not to have it? That's what I like. The sensitive type. And this is one cookie that's not going back to that room till she's had a bracer. Not me either. I want to fix it anyway. Put her in the prop room. Well, leave me to the prop room. I could use one too. Where are you going? There. There. What? The picture of Laverne's mother. It's gone. Why, that's... Lolita's. I threw it out in the roof. Biff. Listen, Dixie. I found this in my pocket. Somebody slipped it there, but I didn't think they'd believe that. They aren't believing anything. So I backed up towards the window. Once a comic showed some brains. Get rid of it. Oh, no, Dixie. I couldn't do that. I've been thinking. I was a coward. Dear. This is evidence. Important evidence. This is the murder weapon. And they're bearing down on you. Do you think I could think of myself? I'm going to turn it in. But if they won't believe you... I'll have to take that chance, Dixie. When I saw you in trouble up there, Harrigan pushing you around, I, well... Yes, I know. You stuck up for me. It was swell of you. Maybe you changed your mind about me? Well, now, don't rush me. After all, you are a comic. It'd be swell to think you had. Maybe you're worried. Well, maybe for a few minutes you... Oh. My goodness, you two certainly have strange taste in romance. Imagine being alone in a room where a woman was murdered and with a man. <laughs> we wanted you to join the party. Looks like we broke one up. I'm coming, but pipe this. The picture of Laverne's mother is gone. Was it there tonight? She never let it out of her sight. She carried it here and home again. She spoke to it, too. Oh, Mr. Kelly will be so excited to hear about this. Oh, no, you don't, Angel. Plus, no more questions until we get some sleep. Maybe we both could do with some of that. Uh-uh. Tonight, I got too much on my mind for sleep. Good night, Dixie. Good luck, Irish. Oh, nothing. I just... Uh, hello. Don't make a move till I get down. Oh, me? What's the matter with a guy getting a little fresh air out here? Now, let's see what you're trying to tuck away, funny man. Oh, nothing. I was just... Uh, Give. Uh, really? I, I just walked out... The Give. Well, now, ain't that cute and pretty? A murder weapon. Or maybe you carry it for sentimental reasons. Why'd you kill a brain? Now, ain't that just like a flat foot? I found it in my pocket, planted. That's why I was looking for you, to give it to you. Oh, you found it. You were going to give it to me. Out here? Well, it's dark and I had a look for you. Oh, you had a look, did you? Were you looking for me down the drain pipe? Do I look like the kind of a guy you'd find down a drain pipe? Hmm. Maybe I wouldn't look in such a classy spot for such a dumb flat footer. The inspector's going to be plenty interested in a guy who tries to get rid of murder weapons. 
We'll just take a little ride down to headquarters. Oh, sure. We'll go down and see the inspector. Sure, that, that's why I was looking for you in the first place. Now, now, look, I'll explain it again. You see, it was dark, and I was looking for you. And, and uh, I, I bent down to get a better look at the upstairs dressing room window, you see? My arm was hanging down by the drain pipe, and... and... What is that drain pipe doing there? I can confirm that, officer. I'm sure Mr. Brannigan only wanted to do his duty. He was so worried about important evidence. Well, I'm through talking. Go on, you burlesque people around such a merry ground, you'll have me catching brass rings. But this guy give you a chuckle, Dixie. He couldn't find a goldfish in a cold cream jar. You weren't using that drain pipe for a maypole. Oh, now listen, Dixie, I was just... Uh... Oh, well. Maybe that little kiss was worth it. Good thing for you. It's the last little kiss you get from this working girl. Maybe life in the electric chair wouldn't be so bad. Maybe if... you'll get a try. Come on. Goodbye, Dixie. So long, comic. about that lug sitting in the cell, are you? Yeah. I was thinking how we felt when we pulled out of Columbus. The old opera was going to be the last rung on the ladder to the Great White Way. You're doing all right. Oh, sure, fine. First we run into comics, then murders. Now that Cossack from Canarsie is on in my spot. That maybe you were expecting my two weeks' notice. On second thought, no notice. Sue me. Is it so bad? Listen, I'm not working burlesque for laughs. This little girl's got her way to make in the world. When you brought me here, you promised me the moon. Now I'm getting green cheese and not liking it. Why? I've been doing all right. My face hasn't fallen apart since yesterday. I know. She wants to get out of burlesque. She wants me to produce a show for her. I told her to wait. She gets impatient, so... Family, huh? So that's the fire that started in Toledo. She went to South America and then she came back. Letters, canceled checks, copies of. Yeah, I get it. Dixie! I, I don't know what to do. Don't worry. Everything's gonna be all right. You look thoughtful, Miss Daisy. 
Awful is no word, Betty. I'm not surprised. Every day is more and more trouble around the old opera. How about the old days, huh? Well, we had trouble then. Not murders, maybe, but I could tell you. <laughs> Don't you ever look at the labels? After 35 years, I know what box they love to. And one for Miss Daisy. Yeah, I suppose we are the oldest things in the theater. The box. Me. The hermit. And me. Another one from the old Guy in row three. Is that a new wrinkle statue? In the old days, the prima donnas would get notes. Maybe from one of the boxes in dozens of roses. And after the performance is over, we of the company would wait and see the prima donnas go out. And there would be crowds and the wealthiest men in the city waiting in evening clothes and carriages. I... I was very torn. What's your voice, huh? And so I took up smoking a pipe and sitting here. We were no better than you people for saving the money. Well, home again after 20 years in the clink. Framed by the villain. The light in the window. The faithful caretaker and the little woman Did waiting. Did they give you a watchdog? Not exactly, Miss Daisy. If you would tell Miss Angel I'm here. What's this? Huh. You're behind in your literature, Irish. He's a 35 years old. You ain't whistling this literature. I learned more about burlesque in five minutes than I did all the time that I was... Yeah, spending. well, hurry it up or we'll send Joey on again and you can sit in the clink for good. Get a load of that guy. How come you are here? Oh, they had to let me go. New evidence. What? They found Louis Carr right around the corner from the theater. So he didn't use that in his getaway. They didn't find Laverne's picture of her mother, but they did find the frame. Where? Ah, they won't say where. They found the leader's bank book in her apartment. Yesterday, she drew 10,000 smackers out of the bank. Now, where did that money go to? Maybe down the drain pipe with the rest of the evidence. Aren't you a teeny-weeny bit glad to see me back? No. Okay. You'll see me in a minute. We're on next. <laughs> tonight, Mr. Kelly. Everything is happening to me tonight. Tonight I do my first <laughs> specialty. Well, I'll be right there to give you my encouragement. Oh, thank you. Of course, now I'll have to wash my weights off my clothes, but... Inspector Hunter Marcus, you can't on duty. After all, this is an important case. Please, Mr. Kelly. Please don't talk about the murder. So gruesome. Who do you think done it? Well, it could be almost anybody. Oh, do you really think so, Mr. Kelly? Here are your pals. You want to huddle on some of those big discoveries? Come on, get up, Mr. Okay. Here I am in a strange and foreign country. And before me stands this mysterious Egyptian gazika box. This is the land of the tsetse fly, the guna-guna bird, and the can-can girl. Also, those strange, mysterious love potions, which nowadays we call vitamin pills. I am what is known as an archaeologist. An archaeologist is a guy that digs up mummies. Well, the other day I dug up a mummy, and he was a hepcat. How did I know he was a hepcat? Because he turned to me and said, Do you dig me, Jack? <laughs> Around the neck again. Bring the curtain down. All right, no side. Look at this. Where's that box come from? The prop room. Get in there. Oh, Mr. Kelly, don't leave me. Boss, somebody just knocked off the princess. Wait 
was she last seen alive? After her number, I guess. Inspector... Inspector, could it... Could it be suicide? It's Louie! off one of our question marks. Or hang one more on our collection. Oh, don't look at me as if I were crazy. Put it down to women's intuition, but I'm sure feeling a chunk of it. Why should he kill the princess? If we knew all the motives in murder cases, Miss Daisy, there would be no mysteries. And besides, the prop room was locked. What's that? It was all right. If he was hiding inside, he couldn't have got out to kill the princess. Well... I guess we're going to have to go upstairs again. Round them up. Hey, you. Upstairs. Okay. Yes, sir. Why was the uh, prop room locked? Had to be. Why, only a month ago, a certain comic walks out with a bundle of my dishes that he says is laundry. <laughs> laundry. But that guy never owned more than one shirt at a time in his life. That's a lie. What's a lie? That you stole my dishes or you got only one shirt? Inspector, the way I figured is... Go on, Jake. Well, last night the prop room was open. Some of the liquor was stored there for the party, and Louie must have run in through the basement and ducked there. Then we trapped him when we went in for that bracer. And I locked the door when we left. He couldn't have got out after you left? No, sir. <laughs> well, seems like we're right back where we started. <laughs> well, Mr. Brannigan, too bad we uh, didn't release you after this killing. Miss mm -hmm. Daisy, Mr. Rogers, Miss Baxter. I found it when he looked over the prop room. Oh. Found anybody here? You, Jay? I... Yes, I... Well, that's Laverne's picture of her... I found it. Honest, I found it like I did the frame, just after that ruckus about the body. I was going to turn it in, too, but it was torn, and you scared me, and I... No reason for you to be scared, unless you were guilty, Jay. You don't believe me. Listen, there's plenty of people been acting suspicious around here lately. He never said nothing about knowing the princess. Ask him why he took her to her hotel last night, and went upstairs with her, too. Ask her why she followed him. Why, she was still sitting there when I left. Why did you follow the princess, Jake? Why, I, I was just trying to help. Yes. Yes, Jake? No. Inspector. He was only trying to help me. Go on, Mr. Boss. I lied. The princess did work in my Toledo theater. We were... We were well acquainted. 
blackmail, Mr. Foss? I see. Where do you come in, Jake? I've been with him in Toledo. I knew she had him on the spot. I thought if I found out something to make her lay off. Listen, when my wife was sick, I found the hospital money in my envelope without even asking. It's things like that you can't repay. Sometimes a person can find a way, Jake. Was the princess satisfied with what you were giving her? <laughs> she kept quiet. She wanted a lot. You had uh, every reason to wish that she were dead, didn't you? Inspector, I... Uh, I... Miss Baxter, I, I beg your pardon, Mrs. Rogers. Why were you following the princess last night? Well, I couldn't make it out. First Laverne and then the princess. I was trying to figure the connection. Naturally. Uh, Mr. Rogers, why did you go home with the princess? Gentlemen don't usually answer that question. Since when were you a gentleman? <laughs> How long did you stay? I can tell you. I sat up long enough in that lobby chair to fall asleep. When I woke up, he was standing at the cigar stand buying a box of cigars. And a humidor to put him in. Cigars? <laughs> well... That doesn't sound very much as though he were in a murdering mood, does it? <laughs> you have any cigars on you now, Mr. Rogers? Sure. Go ahead. Ooh. Ooh. Hmm. Excellent brand. Excellent. My wife saves up sometimes and gives me these for a birthday present. <laughs> you always smoke them? I like class. Hmm. That's a laugh. I smoked his cigars before. Pounded seaweed. Well, as a matter of fact, I... You've changed to something a little more expensive. I see. Why, Mr. Rogers? Why suddenly switch to the most extravagant cigars you can buy? And a whole box at a time, not the usual two or three, and a humidor to keep them in. Why, Mr. Rogers? Let me tell you. Ten thousand dollars is missing. Taken the murdered woman. Enough to buy a good many of these cigars. Money taken by you. Oh, no. Laverne was afraid of Louis. She was going to throw you over. But you wanted the money she had promised. Was that why she withdrew the $10,000? Yeah, yeah, that's it. She gave me the money. When? What time of day? Oh, no. You took that money when she was dead. Or dying. You poisoned her. But she was strong, tough. You watched her writhing and crawling toward the door. She was going to call for help. Oh, stop it. The princess gave me the money. Princess? Sounds like a stall to me. Please. Why, Mr. Rogers? Well, to produce my play. She wanted to get out of burlesque. I heard her kill the fern. Go on. Well, uh, after Louis left, they were making cracks at me, and I... I went down to the princess' room. She wasn't there. She was up with Laverne. I heard them talking through the ventilator. Lolita knew about Toledo, and she'd been threatening to tell Foss's wife and crab the princess' racket. Last night, Navina pretended she didn't mind paying off, that there was enough for both of them. They drink to it. I heard her fill the glasses and then... Alita gagged. You sat by through that? After a couple of minutes, I went up. The princess was coming down from the third floor. When she left the room, she must have heard someone coming up, the, the strangler, and ducked upstairs. But on the way down, I saw her open the door and look in for a minute. Oh, don't you see? That's why she had to be killed. She saw you, perhaps. Did you come up to finish her job? You knew about the money. Oh, so Lolita said she had it on her, but it was gone when I took the G-string. I ought to scare your teeth for planting it on me. Well, I had to get rid of it. He makes me squirm. He's not a very strong character. Why should I kill the princess? Dead women tell no tales, Mr. Rogers. Oh, no, no. I, I couldn't do it. Believe me, I couldn't. No. I don't believe you could. Did you let me go? No, Mr. Rogers. It's a very uncomfortable thing to be an accessory after the fact. Take Mr. Rogers down to headquarters. Book him. Oh, Rob. You got me in this. Take your filthy hands off. Steady. Inspector, whatever I thought, well, I, I take it back. Well, it certainly makes me feel relieved. And me too. And well, I hope not too relieved. We have eliminated one suspect, Louis, and one mystery, the poison. But the strangler... Well, Miss Daisy, does your woman's intuition tell you Mr. Rogers is guilty? No. 
I must warn you all to stay as far away from the theater as possible. The murderer will probably strike again. In fact, it might be best to close the... Close the... There... There will be no show tomorrow. You can come to my office for your checks. That's all. I'm, uh, I'm not exactly used to making speeches. It isn't my beautiful diction that gets me by in burlesque, but here goes. This murderer seems to have done pretty well what he tried to do. Close the old opera. First he pulled the raid, and when that wasn't enough, he really started putting on the pressure. Now it looks like he's going to get what he wants. And darn the plan for letting him get away with it. It's darn the plan for sticking around to get strangled by my own beadwork. I've left a lot of jobs in my time, but I always stuck until the last kick in the pants if the job was worth having. And I'm not going to be scared out of the best job I ever had by a couple of ghosts. We're all stockholders, aren't we? We've got a right to protect our property. We've got a stake in seeing that the old opera keeps going. You know, once I thought I wanted to get out of Burlick. Now I'm not so sure. Maybe I'm not so snooty anymore. Maybe I just want to stick around with G.G. Darling. Fosty and Jake and Sammy and Alice and Mandy and Come on. Who's gonna be the first to chip in with me? Dixie. Count me in. I'm with you, Dixie. Yes. We'll stick and stick and stick. And stick. All right, you're all bats, but I guess I'm bats with you. Well, I guess I'll get dressed. Yeah, that's yeah. Surprising profession. <laughs> Don't hurry. Oh, God, I'm hurrying. I'm not scared. I still haven't decided whether I like you or not. Oh, go on. <gasps> well, I guess I'll have to get along without you tonight, Sarah Jane. I'll finish this at home. You didn't do that, Miss Daisy. Oh. oh! I noticed nothing ever happens after I come on. I hear you having more excitement tonight. Yeah, a little. Yeah. So long. See you at the Pearlin. Okay. I'll be back in a minute. I want to get some cigarettes for the machine in the lobby. I'll be ready then. Bring me a pack, too. Where are you going, honey? Who, me? Well, I'm going down to the Peerless Bar and Grill with the rest of you guys for a midnight snack and a whale of a time. Princess, but she wasn't half dead already. And now, another lovely lady of burlesque, the loveliest of them all. I wanted to kill every woman on that stage, close the old opera. She'd gone forever. Once it was a place of glory. Ah! You aren't afraid of ghosts? Ah! You'll be one. Ah! Not so free with the murder, pal. Dixie, 
see, honey. Oh, Biff. You sound like you're glad to see the face. I never was so glad to see a face in my life. What were you doing out there? Who, me? Yeah. Watch it out. Remember a little grandstanding that flat foot here misunderstood? Yeah, the maypole. <laughs> and the reading matter I educated myself with in the clink? Yeah. Mr. Brannigan's taste in reading was unexpectedly useful. Very unexpectedly. Right in the middle of it, I found a dame's picture that looked familiar. Laverne's... Her mother, sure. But I didn't remember it till I got a flash of that torn picture and checked it upstairs afterwards. Then all I had to do was look at the name. Statuero. Now, everybody knows how Statue or Statuero here was sour on burlesque. Must have really thrown him off his nut when he found his own granddaughter was working here. Granddaughter? Sure. You never know where you find a relative in show business. But Grandpappy's pride couldn't swallow us. You mean you figured that out all by yourself? Some grandstanding, huh? Now, the way I figure it, while he was hiding in the cellar during the raid, he sees you trying for the coal shoot, and he really goes bats. Next, he tries his little strangling act on Laverne. The princess catches him at it, so that makes it her turn next. And while I'm upstairs trying to sell this story to these two, I hear about Gigi being dumb enough to leave you alone so he could finish what he started. Why didn't you just send him an engraved invitation, honey? Well, that does it. Why, you ham and bushling hawkshaw. Dixie had a hunch it was Sashi ever since you spotted his hands at the mailbox. The hands are trying to choke her to glory. So she framed all this. I've been sitting down the stairs with, with him, waiting for something to happen. What we didn't know was the statue was already in the room. What I didn't know was that I'd be too scared even to scream. But I had to try my hunch out some way. Nobody seemed to think a lot of my intuition. As I said before, burlesque is a surprising business. <laughs> so surprising, it took a couple of burleskers to figure this out. Mr. Kelly, where were you? I was waiting. We, uh, I, uh, we had a, uh... You mean Statue? Mm-hmm. Oh, the things that happen around here. Alice! Are you all right? Oh, of course I'm all right. I had to come I to I gotta take them down. Oh, that's why you don't like me. I thought you were the girl who didn't like comics, even from a distance. Well, from close, this one isn't bad. Say, what is this routine? Oh, it's the same old routine. But maybe with a different finish. I want a blonde. You want a blonde? What kind of a blonde? Any kind. One like this, or one like this, or one like this. You look like you're a blonde at heart. Maybe I feel like one. Hey, lady, you left your motor running. And you started it. And I bet I can finish it. Run again. Again. <laughs> Invite the gang, Gigi. We're dunking donuts at a wedding breakfast. Ouch! Oh! Oh, Dixie! Look! Well? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't love thrilling? Oh, it sure is. Yeah. If only you Speak up or do something. Well, I, I thought that you and that fellow in there, y'all. Oh, don't uh, be silly. Never did like big fella. Then, then you mean that you would? That is, you <laughs> could. You... Oh, you make me so glad. Oh. <laughs> 